Okay, now last episode we put in the crank on the block and turned it up and we're raking on the head, right? And now we're gonna put the ACL race rod bearings, prep it up for installation, pre-loop the rod bearings and the rod bolts. And then here you can see the ACL rod bearings are all ready, all snug in this place. And set the ring gap, of course, and the head is done, it's finished. So we're gonna install the pistons and drop in the head. Let's go. <laughs> First things first, our new page is up and running. This is because my old Facebook got hacked, so I lost control of the page. Now here's the price list, you can check it out. And also going back to that, the old page is still up there, but I lost moderation control because my Facebook account, my personal Facebook got hacked. So there was no other moderation control. So on the new page, I'm trying to make it even better than before. We're updating it almost daily. Well, technically daily uh, on the shop work that we do, as you can see here, all sorts of work that does not generally make it to the video or to, into a content. So we're still posting it there. This way, all the followers and the people that like the page can get the updates as it rolls on their feed. So yeah, even the most technical stuff is always there. So link will be in the description below. So I'll see you there guys. So now let's start this. Okay, so we unpacked the ACL race rod bearings. Here it is, you can see. Now we uh, remove it from the plastic or the shrink wrap and we install it. Make sure everything is clean, especially the rod bearing saddle. Now of course, we disassemble the oil pump to check it blueprint rebuild and this is standard on all the engines that we rebuild be it stock or like this fully built or with mods we always rebuild the oil pump this way the oil pressure is going to be good as new or top notch and we have a video all about oil pumps and here remember last episode we were showing you we we're finishing the head it was not yet done but we we're getting there as you can see here and also the exhaust on this side yes shaping up right and now after washing it up it's all done here back to the workbench you can see now it's all done and all cleaned up oh yeah it looks really really good you can see the bowl is blended well and the whole intake port is done this is looking real real good this is gonna make good power indeed yes sir yes sir and now let's look at close here's port number three as you can see with the, with the light, you can see the contours, right? This area here is left untouched. And here you can see it's still, you know, sanded or touched, but this area again, on this area here, this section is left untouched. That's because this section, the core shift, this made it too deep. So if you port that, it's gonna be lopsided. Then you can see here straight through, the intake is balanced really, really well, left and right. So if you port all of that, it's gonna be different. Let's look at port number four. See, there's a section that I left untouched. That's because this area here is already deep. And here, this one is okay. But this is how you see each head is different because even each port is always different. So you gotta port it accordingly and properly. And here on the intake bowl or the short turn, which is normally not shown by other guys, here we can you can see we contoured it well. And I talked about this extensively on the members only video when we pointed a PR3 B16 head. It's a 24 minute long video, but that's because it's full of details. And I talked about things extensively with all the details. Now let's check out the exhaust ports. Here it is. As you notice, we didn't really point it or like enlarge it. We just contoured it and streamlined, especially the port finish. This way, the exit speed is maintained the highest. Here, let's look at it closer. As you can see, this is finished with 120 grit, and we just used our mix of lube as we, you know, go with the sanding roll with the 120 grit. We go back and forth with the lube. And of course, 
aside from RPM on the grinder, it's the pressure that you press when you're porting would actually give you a certain finish or the finish that you want. Here's another angle or another view, sorry. As you can see, even the port floor, which is the roof in this video, in this scene, look at that. The light shows you the contours are done properly. This is gonna be flowing really good. Now, as my colleague assembles this head, let's go back to the engine stand. Here, we gap the rings. The top ring is 0 0.015 and the second ring is 0 0.018. And then the oil control rings, we set it quite loose. This way, there is less friction or less drag or parasitic loss. So the engine turns freely, but still functions as it should, the oil control rings, that is. So yes, now let's prepare the piston rings onto the pistons. Back to the workbench. And you can see here, the ACL rod bearings are on the rods pretty snug and really, really clean. Now it's all ready. And the piston rings are laid out properly in order here. Now we can assemble it and the lube, let's go. We will time lapse this, this way it doesn't get too boring. As you can see, we actually lube the pistons before we put the oil control rings, then the second ring, and then the top ring. This way the lubrication or the lubricant is under the piston rings well, so that before we put the ring compressor, it's lubed even better. So now here, okay, now it's done. Let's look at it close. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And that's the piston ring lube that we mix. It's ATF and mineral spirits. All right. Now we're going to prep the block, wipe off the board, make sure it's super, super clean before we install the piston rings. Of course, we're going to stretch the rod bolts. Yes, sir. Let's go. Okay. And as my colleague tries to get me some paper towels or a thick tissue paper, and the carb cleaner or the brake cleaner because we're going to spray this a bit on that so that we can wipe it off clean because it's going to have a bit of flash rust as you know because it's freshly bored even after we scrape the boards with the, while we're setting the ring gap it's still going to have flash rust and we're going to show you a video of it don't worry i want to wipe it let's go let's go okay here first we spray it with carb cleaner or brake cleaner you know, just to get all the flash rust off. Can we spray it now? And then the paper towel or the shop towel here. I'll show you guys, you can see the brown is not really dirt. It's actually rust. Look, brown. Okay. We wipe all the board clean. And then after we lubricate it with WD-40. That's enough. And we've always used that. I learned that from Larry Widmer, former owner of Endyne. Because we lubricate the bore with WD-40, but the piston ring is on our, our own ATF and mineral spirits mix. It's lubed well. This way, the break-in just goes really well. It doesn't take too long. It doesn't take forever. Now we wipe this so that it's equally spread out. Not to remove it, you know, we just spread it out. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, now let's go with the pistons. Let's go. Okay, now here, look close on the piston pin. We actually lubricated it with assembly lube or the Turco assembly lube because on first startup, this is still dry because oil has not been thrown up there yet. So until you rev it, it needs lubrication. All right, so now let's go get this ERP lube and then the Turco, the ring compressor and wait. Oh, okay. Oh crap, my fault. Okay, here, there. Now, we get the piston number one. All right. Let's go, let's go. Wait, wait. Okay, there. All right, now let's go to the engine stand here. Okay. Tap it. It's good. Yes, there. All right. With the ERP lube. We do this hand tight first. We're going to stretch it later. Okay, there you go. Now... We go back to the desk and get piston number two. There you go. All right. Uh, yes, yes. Okay, now back to the engine stand. All right, tap it in good. All right, and then the rod cap. Yes, this side first, and then turn it a bit on the other side now. All right. Now, okay, piston number three. Let's go. Here. 
Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry about that. Oh, sorry. Okay, now let's go install this. Simple and easy. Turn it for the rod cap. Okay, this side first, and then the other side. Okay, the rod caps are all lubed before we drop in the pistons, just in case you guys are wondering. Okay, now the last one, piston number four. Oh, move it straight. Okay, yes. Number four, the last one. All right, let's go. Okay, there you go. Yes. All right, as you can see, the assembly loop has dripped all the way down to the girdle. This is why Jay Meager of Real Street said, when you install the crank, you gotta wipe the boards because sometimes it gets assembly lube. Okay, now let's turn it up again. You can hear it, it's freshly bored and honed and brand new piston rings. Oh yes, it sounds really, really good. I actually like listening to that or hearing that because I know this would run in good wherein the piston rings will seat in. All right, let's turn it. Now let's get ready to stretch the rod bolts. Okay, now it's there. Okay, number one is ready. All right, here. Now we zeroed out the rod bolt stretch gauge. And so we're going to torque this between 26 to 28 feet pounds torque. That's so that it's within the window of the ARP rod bolts. And then we'll check if it stretches to the required. If not, we're going to re-lubricate it again. Okay, now after torquing it, let me unclip the phone. Let's see. There you go. It's 0 0.005. Yes, it's ARP suggests is 0 0.005 to 0 0.0055. And now this one is for exactly for find the right beat because he's the one who first noticed the cross hatch was retaining oil and that's doing its job properly. Oh, it sounds really good, right? Okay, here, let me show you. Let me unclip the phone. This is what he was talking about. As you can see, the oil is not dripping off. It's being held by the cross hatch and that's doing its job. Now my colleague finished assembling the valve train on the head. Now we're back to the workbench. You can see that. Crower, valve springs, and retainer. Yes, sir. As Ferreira or Supertech intake valve seal. And exhaust, of course. Okay, now let's go back to the block. Wait, no, no, no. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Now let's tilt the head and spray carb cleaner or brake cleaner on the deck here on the deck surface of the head this way we can be sure there's no oil or grime or debris before installing it because we're gonna run the intake gasket because it's orig original honda intake gasket we're gonna run it dry and we'll just make sure this is all clean and because it's gonna run arp head studs so that's gonna be torqued really high well, until 60 or 70 or even 80 as ERP suggests, but we always go between 60 to 70. All right, here we go. Now we check the dowel. Where is it? Where is it? Oh, there. Okay. And then we drop in the head. Wait, no. Let me double just, let me just double check. Sorry, sorry. No, well, no. Nah. Okay, no, nah, it's still clean. All right, good, good. Always double check like that just to be sure. Okay, now we go get the head. All right, here we go. We align it carefully and then drop it in because the dowels are there. So it'll be perfectly aligned once you get into the dowel. Okay, okay, it's closer. Okay. Now let's go get the ARP head studs. We drop it in, we install it via Allen wrench first. We now hand tight this with the Allen wrench, hand tight all the way all right okay now we dropped in the arp head nuts and we're gonna tighten this oh wait wait sorry 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 i have to tighten it by hand first because it's too far i was about to torque it the first time but hey it's gonna be too far okay now we will time lapse this so it's not gonna be boring all right there okay first step is what we do is 20 feet pound torque we do this in three steps instead of two so it's 20 feet pound torque first there, right. and then turn up the rest. We'll do one more. Come on, twenty. Okay, now it's time lapse. All right. Now on the second step, we do forty feet pounds torque. Okay, 
Now this is gonna click louder, definitely. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. Then we're gonna time lapse this after this because it's gonna take way too long. Okay, now we do the rest on 40 feet pounds torque. And the last one is 60. Some go all the way to 70 or 80, but we just go to 60. Especially this is just all motor. So it's 60 feet pounds torque. Now it's gonna take a while. It's heavy. Okay, there. Come on. Okay, there. Okay, now, unfortunately, I didn't get to click the red card on the time lapse, but yeah, we got it done and over with. So now it's all 60 feet pound storage. It's all done and deal. So now here, earlier we double checked the measurements on the top dead center. We zeroed it out from the deck, like here. And you can see it's zeroed out on the deck, right? And here, because this is NPR, and usually it's 0 0.040 below deck, but this one is 0 0.035 below deck. That's because the block has been milled 0 0.005 of an inch, just to make sure it's flat. So next up is we degree the cam. So you know, you gotta click here when it's done.